Hello, my name is Roddy and today we're going to look at Scottish Parliament elections. All 129 seats in the Scottish Parliament are contested in a Scottish parliamentary election. Elections tend to take place every four years on the first Thursday of May, though can take place every five years so as not to clash with a UK general election, although can take place even sooner if a government loses a vote of no confidence by a two-thirds majority. Anyone can vote in a Scottish parliamentary election so long as they are on the electoral register, aged 16 or over on the day of the election, and are a UK, EU or Commonwealth citizen who is resident at an address in Scotland. MSPs are elected by the additional member system, which is split in two, meaning the ballot itself is also split in two. On the right hand side ballot, voters put an X next to the candidate they would like to see represent their local area, known as their constituency, and on the left, they put an X next to the political party or independent candidate they would like to see represent their region of Scotland. The constituency vote is responsible for selecting 73 of Parliament's 129 MSPs and takes place on a first-past-the-post basis. Many candidates choose to stand independently, but the majority tend to stand on behalf of political parties. After the election, all the votes are counted and the candidate with the most votes in their constituency becomes an MSP. One advantage of this system is that it is very straightforward and also has the advantage of being democratic in the sense the constituents then have their own MSP to voice their views in Parliament. On the other hand, it could be argued to be undemocratic in the sense that, for instance, a candidate might become MSP after having received 7,000 votes, despite two other candidates in the constituency having received 5,000 votes each. And so most people in that constituency did not vote for the person now representing them. The first-past-the-post system also disadvantages smaller parties at a national level, as they might gain tens of thousands of votes across Scotland, but if they do not win a majority of votes at any constituency level, they will not gain seats in Parliament. The second part of the election selects the remaining 56 MSPs and takes place on the closed list system. On this basis, Scotland is divided into eight regions, which tend to encompass eight to ten constituencies, and each region then elects seven MSPs. Prior to the election, political parties draw up lists of candidates they want to put forward for a certain region. Voters will then either vote for a political party or an independent candidate at this time. And if a party wins, for instance, three seats in a region, the top three candidates on their predetermined list will become MSPs for that region. The results of the vote are calculated using the Dahon method as I'll demonstrate in this example. As you can see, once the regional votes for each party have been counted, the votes for each party are then divided by a divisor. The way this divisor is found is to take the votes won at a regional level and divide this number by the number of seats currently held in a region, which of course to begin with is only constituency seats, plus one. In the case of party A, they have won 62,000 votes in the regional ballot and won two constituency seats in the region. So two seats plus one equals three. 62,000 divided by three equals 20,666. Once the calculation has been made for each of the parties, in this case, party D had the largest result of 38,000, and therefore they gain the first regional MSP. However, going into the second stage, party D is now in possession of an additional seat in the region, so their divisor is now one seat in the region, plus one equals two. 38,000 divided by two is 19,000. So at the second stage, party C now has the largest result with 30,000, and party C wins the second regional MSP. This process is now repeated until all seven regional MSPs are selected. You may have noticed that party B gained 64,000 votes and won no seats, whereas party D gained 38,000 votes and won three seats. This is the result of a deliberate design installed when Parliament was established so as to balance the advantage larger parties held in the first part of the vote. Its purpose was to try and ensure that no one party could become too dominant in Parliament, meaning all parties would have to work together and more voters' views would be represented. After the election, the monarch will ask the MSP who can command the most stable Parliament to become First Minister of Scotland and form a government 
in much the same way as they appoint a Prime Minister after a UK general election. However, what is unique about the Scottish Parliament is that, after the election, the Parliament itself has 28 days to select the MSP who they then recommend the monarch asks to become First Minister and form a government. In the event the Parliament cannot decide upon a prospective First Minister within those 28 days, a second election will then take place. This has played out in a number of different ways in the past. In 1999, Donald Dewar's Scottish Labour Party won 56 seats of the 129 available, nine seats short of the majority required to pass legislation through Parliament without difficulty. They therefore joined forces with the 17 Scottish Liberal Democrat MSPs to control a majority of seats in Parliament and were consequently able to elect Donald Dewar as Parliament's choice for First Minister. In 2007, Alex Salmond's SNP were the largest party in Parliament with 47 seats, but sat well short of an overall majority. However, with the promise to work constructively with other parties in Parliament, the Scottish Green Party agreed to vote in favour of Alex Salmond, and the Scottish Conservatives and Scottish Liberal Democrats agreed to abstain, allowing Alex Salmond to be elected as Parliament's choice for First Minister. In 2011, the SNP won a majority of seats in Parliament with 69 MSPs elected, and simply voted for Alex Salmond to become Parliament's choice for First Minister by themselves. If you would like to register to vote in future elections, follow the link below. Thank you.